We just sat down again with the fantastic Jonathan van Blerk, serial entrepreneur and, shall we say, eyewear expert. We're speaking today about what it's like to build your businesses and build multiple businesses in very trying and challenging times, what it's like working with large international companies and partnering with them, and what it takes to be optimal in a world sometimes that feels like it's boxing us in. The choices that we make on a daily basis are the ones that are going to affect us in the long run. The environments that we put ourselves in on a daily basis are the ones that are going to ultimately affect our quality of life over our lifetime. This is a good one for anyone looking to start a career as an entrepreneur or those who have spent lifetimes building their businesses and are maybe considering, have they been doing the right thing? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. Yeah, no, that it just, and I've just started recording because this is good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for us, bad, bad habits can lead us down a path where we don't really want to end up. And it's those things have to be broken. It's a crazy thing with, that I see within recovery because people, if you're not willing to do the work, you fall back into those habits really quickly because they're yeah. comfortable and they're easy, right? And we've got to be able mm -hmm. to push and to move forward. So 100%. So. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's kick it off. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back. Give a big round of applause. I'm a 1970s DJ. <laughs> welcome back, Johnny, to the podcast, dude. <laughs> Started off Thank very you. somber, yeah. So, yeah, Jonathan van Blerk, it's awesome <laughs> to have you back. Thank you. Uh, a lot's been happening, I think, since we last chatted. We last spoke about the launch of um, Ultimate Vision and the other things that were happening around that. And uh, there's right. been a lot you were mentioning with the um, with the the cruise lines now. Stuff was happening and. Uh, so very keen to chat about that and to catch up. But for the guys who don't know you or haven't watched the first episode, can you give us a quick rundown on who you are? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm a, a, a serial entrepreneur. So yep, absolutely. Good, good, and, good and bad comes with that. So, uh, you, you're you know, an entrepreneurial well. addict. How about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Some, mm. Sometimes in recovery mode. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just think the important thing and the reason we get on so well is mm. the, the whole aspect of uh, challenging ourselves and life and, and trying yep. to, like you said, live a, live a life of uh, value and difference. That's it, 100%. So it's, a, it's a daily thing. Cool. So I think, you know, also with how you run the business and how you conduct yourself, Absolutely. It's just, it's why we get on so well. And uh, I love what you do. Um, I love being a, a brand ambassador for the glasses. It's epic. I mean, you know, you, you've sent me quite a few pairs and uh, these tend to be my favorite. So uh, the mm -hmm. blue, because uh, they, they, they put a big smile on my face. Um, one of the, the pairs during that photo shoot, as you know, ended up in the bottom of the ocean. And I was having a chat to our photographer, Jana, today. We were wanting to, I booked another shoot with her for um, the end of December. But uh, just saying like, mm -hmm. it was my glasses and her camera <laughs> that got taken oh, out with, with a big wave <laughs> on Bakoven. So yeah, it was, it was a little bit stressful, but we carried on. I suppose that's the value for the... Um, the the having a second camera with you <laughs> but uh, if you need it yeah, if you need a the, camera the, the, glasses, the mermaid of back over needs something also <laughs> yeah you know, she got great glasses and uh, and the and the sony um so yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i'm very cautious when i walk on the rocks in that part of town now so i was there a couple of weeks ago <laughs> very cautious <laughs> yeah so tell us about the the msc stuff the cruise line stuff um, with yes, the distribution, I mean, yeah. Yeah. MSC is obviously a really interesting company being based out of Italy and has a bit of a history here. 
Um, we we've gone ahead and done I think it's six ships currently, which is sure. which is really interesting. So um, you know it's uh, it's obviously retail concession stuff where uh, the visibility. I mean, something people don't realize is it's actually the fastest growing business in the world. The the cruise lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is weird. Um, you know, I'm I'm not convinced that it's for me. Mm-hmm. As, as a as a recreational thing, but I mean, right. it, it, it's amazing how many people love it, and I you think know, it's it, uh, yeah. it's certain it's certainly a amazing amazing venture, amazing mm. involvement right. for for brands and for the company. Um, that and obviously all the the airlines and that is 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 a really key focus for 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 the eyewear side of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking more the wholesale and distribution side of the business, but not the retail side. I mean, obviously, the store like like UV and things like that is a big focus for telling our retail stories so directly to customer. Right. The I mean, for people who don't really know the cruise line um, industry well, you, you've got several thousand people on those ships at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're literally fro- floating hotels, yeah. right? So, um, and is this something that sort of they will be doing themselves um, in a store or a, a stand? Uh, both. So okay. yes, we we will do very high end promotions. Actually, so so with a brand like Formula One, mm-hmm. we'll actually go to races and do it at the venue. So in in Abu Dhabi and Miami and things mm-hmm. like that. The whole idea is to to retail stuff and taking it a step further where we actually. A customer could come on and order a pair of glasses, have it 3D printed and presented to them half a day later, you know, sure. six yeah. hours later. So you literally get your own unique pair. And, and, um, and that sort of scan you know, for and your and face just, and your head shape and everything. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's yours 100% for you to your size, you know, done with all our expertise and, and all the technology we have. Um, but you're also right. I mean, the, the cruise business is, is weird because... Even MSC have four levels of ships, so you have all your your big ones, your, you know, the Europa mm-hmm. and things like that, which carry. I think Europa has seven thousand passengers and three thousand staff. Right. So, and then then That's they've nice. got much higher end stuff where they have, I think their 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 premium line currently has three thousand passengers and two thousand staff. Okay, so that that's a a, a higher staff ratio. Yeah, yeah, it's just attention to detail. So, okay, can we ask? I mean, how did that idea come about? I mean, it's brilliant. Uh, what was um, sort of? How did that start? It, it wasn't a very. It wasn't a major thing. Um, I was in Monza at one of the Formula One races, and the, the CEO of MSC popped in and liked the concept. Mm-hmm. Then, for the six months later, our distribution guys who handle duty free for us um, a company called magnify had uh, had some conversations uh, built a relationship with who's running the the retail side of that uh, and then um, you know it's that it, we managed to realize it um, it was a pain in the ass to realize to to be fair mm-hmm. right. because logistics is such a massive thing you know you're talking about MSC who who are actually a shipping company yeah you know, it's, you know, they're monstrous when it comes to shipping containers. Mm-hmm. I mean, things like that. So they're actually a logistics company. Then right. investing into ships. I mean, this this last quarter they've invested in three new ships. You know, completely hydrogen run ships. So it's a, you know, it's the the amount wow. of investment going into it is is crazy. I I don't know where it's, it's where it's going to stop for them, but um, you know, it's certainly massive growth and from just being a part player in it, I think they're becoming a, you know, one of the leading players. So it's, it's a good brand for us to be attached to. Obviously, they are all, they're also a global partner with Formula One. So mm-hmm. there was that link of it also. So pushing our Formula One brand. Then, you know, the involvement of trying to, you know, as you know, 
you know, the I respect collection really well, mm-hmm. being a brand ambassador. And then we, you know, we've done the, the diffusion collection of I respect, which is Monaco, I mm-hmm. respect and starting to try to tell that story also, mm-hmm. which is obviously nicely aligned with high end ships and things like that. So, you know, currently, I think most of the ships are somewhere between Miami, the Caribbean and mm-hmm. Brazil. Because right. it's, it's the season that when season. They're, mm-hmm. they're out that side. Yeah. So, so you know, the last two months were obviously very hectic getting it sorted out and getting it done. And thank goodness for Sylvia taking, <laughs> taking care of everything else I'd be, else I'd be nowhere. <laughs> Hundred percent sure. How how are the brands doing? Um, I mean, they're, they're all growing, and um, how they're, how are they are. Um, the the twenty four involvement is really nice, and we're about to 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 release the new collection, so that's going to be exciting. Um, you know, I think it's really important if you have more than one brand to to give each brand attention. So it's mm-hmm. how you focus on that, tell its unique story, and. You know, I'm the type of person who, who wouldn't do it if I didn't believe in the story or the story wasn't authentic. Right. How, how do so, you strike that balance? So you, mm. um, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge yeah. every day. Right. How do you not sell out? Mm. Sure. So, I mean, so the, the, you know, yeah. believing, believing what you do. Yeah. Because, I mean, that, that can be quite... Um, quite a serious challenge when you're running a business right where there are opportunities or options that come available that you don't you know that might be very lucrative in the short term but you don't want to get involved mm-hmm. with because they will shorten the you know the 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 brand value life so mm-hmm. and that, that's that's I, tough I, I think opportunities are are, are a good tough mm. and i think when you have opportunities you can make decisions on that. I think the, the, the actual flip side of that is the challenges. So yeah. it's actually, and I think that goes down to doing something of value is making decisions when you have challenges that are good decisions. And that's really hard. I think that's, that's more of a challenge, mm-hmm. you know, because in, in any business, your experience over the last year, my yeah. experience over the last years, you know, the, the, the ups and downs, you have to you just have to accept. You have to swallow. It's amazing how resilient you can be, yeah. And how you know, I I I, I see big businesses also going into survival mode or into mm-hmm. growth phase or into, you know, we're we're in a situation where in in all reality we have a real pressure on cash flow in the business constantly. Right. Right. Yeah. Because when you going into growth in a wholesale and distribution business, the model is very delayed. So what you're investing, mm. as soon as you're going to even see that for a second is four months down the line. Right. So and it's, it's and that's in a best that. case scenario, right? Exactly. And that's in a best case scenario. Mm. Then, then you take that four months. So like I'm saying, we're about to look at presenting new collections. For, for for Monaco, we've got an mm-hmm. optical collection. For I respect, we've designed an optical collection. Also have a sun collection design. For Formula One, we have a sun collection designed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have all of that in place. But all the work was done on that a year ago. And then it right. went into sampling nine months ago. And then samples came out seven months ago. And then the process starts of... of of going into in, into production and and how you go about that. So, you know, we're um, it's it's a it's it's a really interesting model and something mm-hmm. I wish there was a quicker solution to and production. And that's also why we're looking at the the more sustainable side of of three D printing and how we do production locally and right. and things like that. You know, and that's why a big focus has come back to a lot of production locally and you know, um, and, and your supply chain in your in your local area. I think that's been one of the big pluses of, of, of Italy and spending a lot of it. It has a has a culture of production and things like that. So, you know, we we, we grew up in a in an area full of entrepreneurs, but actually going through a cultural revolution. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in reality a war 
a war torn area in a way, but a cultural yeah. war torn area. Yep. Then, then you know, having having lived in in the UK, which is a company that a, a country that did a lot of production, but actually produces very little nowadays. Mm. And it's been a real eye open and really nice being back in a place where, as a massively old culture, yet they still have day to day production. It's it's a very important part of the fabric of culture. Um, you know where where we're based and where UV is based. It's a mm. it's a really interesting area because there's a lot of there's obviously all the food stuff. So you know it's you've got you've got everything food stuff around you and amazing wine culture and all of the all the different types mm. of things and producing things in a limited area. So they have this DOC DOP thing where you can only produce this in a certain area for a certain thing and it's got to be done in a certain way and that so it keeps the culture of that. Right. But also, for example, the area where it produces socks and tights and things like that. And yet, to this day, they're still doing it. Sure. You know, our, our, mm -hmm. our closest, closest production town, in a way, is, is a really old, like a, a, let's call it a market town. Mm -hmm. But there's some amazing companies still here. I mean, producing really high end stuff. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a, Definitely a, a culture of where they they know how to produce. We'll keep doing that day to day work of it, and uh, so it's it's great being being based out of here, okay. and it's it's something that's certainly helping the evolution of the business. Um, so on that point, to follow on, how important has your move there been for you? I think business wise, personally, mental health, <laughs> that type of uh, those type of things. I yeah, I think I think it was was almost it was a critical time for me. You know, I think um, again, it's it's stuff where you feel you're doing stuff with value and mm. and able to do it with value. I think um, there is there, there is in in every old culture a lot of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of entrepreneurship here. There's you know there's a lot of people who who work very hard and do stuff of value. Right. Not, nece not necessarily financial value, but of, of real value to themselves. And mm. I think they live very well with that. You know, um, the, the quality of life is, is exceptional. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's a big part of it. And, you know, I think when, when you're having a businesses that go through change and challenges while opening other businesses, it's, it, it's, it's a real um, plus, plus add all the mm. travel we do. Yeah. Sure. It's a real tough mental and emotional mm. challenge daily. But I think, um, you know, firstly, weather plays a massive part of it. Right. So, you know, if you've, you know, just all, all those light things play. Yeah. I think nature plays a massive part of mm. it. I think quality of food plays a massive part of it. I think all of that adds to a quality of life and, um, and, and culturally, you know, um, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know. Uh, I'm always amazed with with Sylvia, who 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 you know grew grew up in the area, has travelled the world, has done lots and lots of things, but yet she 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 loves being based at home, has an incredibly close relationship with her parents, but also sure. has both her sets of grandparents. Sure. And I don't know wow. anybody who wow. who grew up grew up with us exactly. Do you know? I don't know a single person who grew up with us who has yeah. both sets of grandparents. Wow. That, that's unbelievable. You know I, mean? and I, mean, that's, I, that's I suppose that says life. everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's quality of life. What are the things for you personally where you are that uh, that you love that you find are enhancing your quality of life? Um, I'm quite simple, so it's always the simple things. Food. <laughs> that's a great start for me, yeah. and not just food. It's not about quantity mm. of food. Mm. It's about it's about what it is. Yeah, you know. So this time of year, so, so mm. okay, here we go. It's a perfect example. They only eat stuff that's seasonal. So stuff right. that you grow, you eat. Mm -hmm. You don't. Eat, sure. It's not a culture of refrigeration. So you don't go eat something that's out of season six months. You know, six months in the past or six months in the future. Right. You know, same thing. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a case of everything's done. So at the moment, 
just fennel season's finished. So the fennel was amazing. And now it's winter, it's radicchio and radicchio mm. season. And that's like a, you know, so everything you have is based around those things. Sure. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's such a valid point that you make. And, you know, speaking from a business point of view, and yeah, you know, I'm sure it's as applicable to employees, but they're focusing on, on, on entrepreneurs. The mm -hmm. environment that you put yourself in on a daily basis, mm -hmm. as you said, will have subtle effect on you from the weather yeah. to the climate to the food will have a subtle effect on you. But over the long run, it's going to have a profound effect on how functional you are with your business, um, how functional you are with your own quality of life and your health and your longevity. I'm mm -hmm. thinking from my, my, myself because I'm getting nagged quite often by people um, mm -hmm. who live in Cape Town that I should be moving to Cape Town. And it's mm -hmm. interesting for me here, I prefer Johannesburg at the moment because the thing that is the least stressful for me is the turnaround in getting things done. So, you know, wh when I was living in Cape Town and working in Cape Town, for all of that mm -hmm. beauty, it was, I found the, the turnaround time and the commitment to getting stuff done was a far greater stress than the what the benefit I got from the restaurants or being able to walk on the promenade and these wonderful yeah. wonderful things. So sometimes the, for, so that's what's valuable to me. But what I love is just up the road from me, there's a little uh, Greek restaurant with magnificent scrambled eggs, magnificent toast. It's off the beaten track, and it's far better than eating at a chain in a in a strip mall. Effectively, so those are the little yeah. things where it's like. I'm 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 a bit stressed. I'm going to put on my my tackies and walk up the road and get a double espresso and uh, have a biscotti and sit for five minutes and then you know come back and, and unwind. I think it's hugely important. What were the things yeah, that sort of small, oh. small simple things? Mm, yeah, small simple things. Yeah. What what was the sort of the if I may ask, what were the catalysts for you to want to make the move? Hmm. So started with challenges. Mm -hmm. So so obviously there were personal catalysts that 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 it played a played a role. Um, you know, I think uh, you know, evolving evolving life, personal life stuff, mm -hmm. you know, right. from a relationship to you know, relationships with friends, relationship with my daughter, relationships with other people and things like that. Mm -hmm. So so that played a big catalyst. Um I think you know, there's no secret about Brexit being a disaster mm. yeah. and, and a massive catalyst for people doing it. And I think, you know, we're talking about South African revolution. I think the UK is going through a revolution big time at the moment. And that's a, it's, it's, it's a really hard place to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I think removing myself out of that so that I can mm. concentrate on what's important was, 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 was the focus. Um, a lot, you, you get very unique people who can continue to produce in terrible situations. Mm. We can think of authors and things like that. And people, you know, people who, who, who actually can be in a horrible, horrible situation and produce the most beautiful things. I think, yeah, I think I, us, us mere mortals tend to rather <laughs> have to survive. Yeah. That's it. And we can't go back to what we're good at, or yeah. what we, what, where we can add value. It's our limit. We have limited energy. And if you're using most of it on a daily basis to survive, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. not being as, as productive as you can be. You're not fulfilling your well, potential. You're, exactly. You're not living a life for value. Mm. It's, you know, it's, uh, you're, li you're living a, a survival. Yeah. And that's, that's really you, not. You can't help other people. Yeah. You're only helping yourself, so you can't help other people. Help other people, absolutely. You know, there's um, the you know that uh, uh, thrive and survival matrix or line. You want to be mm -hmm. moving mm -hmm. as close to thriving as possible, and uh, looking where you're spending your energy. And I think the the sense that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having known you for a long time, um, I was listening to a story of sort of it's one of these rather famous internet uh, guys who's an author. And he's transformed his physique and his life. And he's a very tough, you know, ad, a big advocator for tough. And um, 
Mm-hmm. The thing was now he's going off into the mountains and doing crazy stuff, uh, earning sort of ten or sixteen dollars an hour versus uh, doing talks for a million dollars an hour, because you mm-hmm. know it's it's tougher to do that. But for me, mm-hmm. I would rather look at and and I can understand that mindset. But I would rather say, well, do the talks for a million dollars, right? L- live a slightly mm-hmm. softer life, but then you can add substantially more value, because I think that's the thing. Um, and that's what I've seen within you as well, where you are in an environment where you can be optimal and add value, you add substantially more value to people. I'm just even talking yeah. about our relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know. it's about, you know, I think, I think we all live in a very busy life. Mm. Anybody who has their own business or own ventures or things, we live a very busy life. Yeah, absolutely. But it's really important, and and you know, I you know, I yeah. I, I think we've been trying to have this conversation for <laughs> let's say let's no say one. six weeks or something yeah, exactly, yeah, which, is, which is a huge amount of time. But thank mm. God we still make it. We find we eventually get to a stage where we can have these catch ups and say, you know, this 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 is where we're at. Yeah. How are you doing? How am I doing? You know, what what, what, what yeah what what <laughs> exactly yeah, and I think yeah. that's um. Uh, a very important part of friendship and 100%. comradeship and kinship. So, you know, like for me, and, and, and that's why one of the reasons I wanted to start these conversations is I find talking to you very recharging, very inspiring and very uplifting for me. You know, when yeah. we discuss about the good stuff, the challenging stuff and, and just life in general. And I think that's what the feedback I've been getting from people that have listened to them, that has been it. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you're crazy and how busy you are, but what I also mm-hmm. value is like, if you can't make it, it's like not an issue. If I can't make it for you, it's not an issue. It's mm-hmm. an understanding that, okay, cool. There's an hour coming free now tomorrow or next week. I can utilize mm-hmm. it in another way. So yeah. and I, I think that sort of the, there's a minimal ego component to that, which is very, yeah. very beneficial. So yeah. e- Egos are overrated. Ego, yeah. <laughs> They're too much work, man. <laughs> exactly. Trying to uphold an ego. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way too much. I can't even feed myself. You want me to feed the ego? <laughs> you know, ju- just to use as an example where I was mentioning to you that I finally decided to take the time in December now to write the book or finish writing the book. Mm-hmm. And the first thing you said is, who's publishing it? I've got these guys I'd like to put you in touch with. And I think that mm-hmm. that comes from a place of being kind to yourself and looking after yourself and putting you into an environment where you can be optimal and then you can be optimal for others. I think that's something really, when we look after ourselves, we can look after others. I I think there's a difference between dictating experiences and and Mm. honestly sharing experiences. Yeah, that that it's not all good. Yeah, it's not all simple. And and exactly, it's not all simple or it's not Mm. all or clear but if if you can and and genuinely can Mm. it's also quite easy Uh, yeah absolutely absolutely um i i had the opportunity to and it's such an interesting thing where you you look at successful people and i think there's a certain myth or assumed persona around successful people but every successful person that i've met has been kind and considerate and giving and caring. And I think that perhaps if you meet meeting people that profess to be successful, but aren't mm-hmm. those traits, that they're usually not the successful ones. Yeah, I, th- I think wealth or education mm-hmm. doesn't mean success. Yeah, 100%. So that, that's I, exactly it. Yeah. I, I think success is, 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 is a genuine thing. And that's it. It's, 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 it's a very, it's a very mm-hmm. straight line success. Yeah. And that's it. It's being, you know, uh, <laughs> I was going to say it's being content and happy within yourself, but also the driving factor. And I know for you and for myself, there's no contentment. You know, there is contentment to a degree, mm-hmm. but it's building the next thing, building the next thing. And when you were speaking about a four month timeline from, you know, at getting income cash flow back in at the soonest, mm-hmm. I'd say maybe that's, mm-hmm. that's nearly two years. It's 18 months because from the mm-hmm. time there's an idea 
to uh, the, the development of a, then you develop it into a concept and then the production mm -hmm. so it's maybe 18 months two years three years before you start to mm -hmm. see a return on that um, and to keep putting yourself back in that position <laughs> there's got to be something wrong with us so <laughs> I, I think you just have to find that space within in who yeah. you are that's it yeah so I think if you were speaking to some young entrepreneurs or some young people that were looking at starting their own thing, because I, th I think it really is mm -hmm. a who we are um, type mm -hmm. that you're, you're born into that. And I think there's a necessity or an urgency that comes with mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give in terms of prioritizing the balance? And when I say balance, I don't mean, you know, I leave work at five and I come in balance in terms of the amount of energy you put into the business and into also maintaining yourself? Hmm. Um, goodness, businesses take over everything. So it's mm. actually trying to developing things within yourself that can help you firstly protect yourself yeah. emotionally, mentally, and things like that, building up res resilience to it. Because you have to be very thick-skinned, and mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not that thick-skinned. I just you you have to be at times. So it's yeah. it's how you manage that part of it. And I think you know don't don't let people tell you what you can and can't do is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I huge. also also like like with you and the with with your book now, mm. you've actually just got to do it. Yep. You know, you just, you've, you've, you've actually, I think too many people want to take action their whole lives and all of a sudden they no longer have a life. So mm. there's no action. Yeah. There's no action. There's no legacy. There, there's no optimal. There, there's no yeah. quality. There's a much less quality of life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I love that the, the point of don't let other people tell you what to do because truthfully you know failure is not fatal right um and no. seeing seeing the thing that you've put 10 years or 15 or 20 or 30 years into getting hammered and battered and falling looking like it's falling apart um mm -hmm. you know it's just that may the the areas that were not as strong as they could have been those are the ones that are getting removed and it's just understanding that every day is day one right you know, you've got to bring that same energy yeah. and passion to the table, but you now have the years of mm -hmm. experience, which which are mm -hmm. hugely helpful. Yeah, and 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 I think also one 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 little add on is if, if it's very difficult for entrepreneurs to find good people, but if you do yeah. really value them, yeah, bring the, bring them on the journey if they, if mm. that's something they want to do. Yeah, grab them with both hands, not around the neck. But <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Elevate them, don't push them down. I think on that point, it's like just how how challenging has it been for you to find good people, um, those that you'd want to bring on the journey? So, because I think everybody has you have good people for different levels and different things, but for those you want to yeah. bring on the journey, yeah, it's 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 there's no art to it. I'm mm. I. I, I I don't have a I don't have the answer there. I think we, it's something about constant human in our involvement mm. also that yeah. helps that involve. I, I suppose it also comes down to like how would you pick your best friends, right? Your your friends, yeah, exactly. You know, it's that kind of thing. And you I look kind of, for those and, traits. Mm. And and the, the truth is, we most probably have met them already. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. I you think know, you know yeah. they are they are who they are. They are who they are. And I think the people are who they are and they will show you that through their actions, right? Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily their words, but their actions over time. So you know, it just it's sitting back and allowing them to be who they are, allowing mm -hmm. them to show you who they are, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sure. Exactly. Absolutely. Crazy. So what is well, the I, I know we're um, running on low on time. Just, what is the future hold? What's new? A couple of exciting projects. Um, I heard you're at a cool music concert. And uh, <laughs> yeah, listen, music's always a passion. So I'm always involved mm. in doing stuff related around there and we'll always do that. 
and right. obviously very excited to get UV really up and running and you know evolve the story mm -hmm. and what that is about the the, the life of UV mm -hmm. so, so sure. that's a that's a massive focus um okay you know because it's a big focus there's a lot of challenges around it and you know every day we'll deal with those challenges and and get it there but the unique the new unique offering of what it has and you know it's 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 like us talking about you writing your book but mm. really i think the, the amazing value you can bring to uv you know whether we're doing training sessions out of there or you're doing a mm. podcast out of there for a while or you know telling yeah. telling stories about different parts of the world and and experiences and things like that is a is a is a massive massive thing for me so and, and having it, fun it, doing it, it because it, it, it's going to be i think so yeah exactly okay. yeah yeah exactly that's why and, and and really can't can't mm. wait to share it with friends that's awesome because yeah. i know they'll have the same reaction absolutely i think that that's such a i mean i don't want to say a point that i just made is such a great point <laughs> yeah. it's such an important thing that w when you have so much stress and work and the pressure and the responsibility mm -hmm. finding ways to make it fun are, mm -hmm. are like micro holidays you know, like mm -hmm. those moments where that, that's what makes it worthwhile and makes it, it it's mm -hmm. awesome. And I, I'm very excited to see what you guys are going to be doing and coming up with and, and releasing soon. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. So, cool. So where do guys find you and uh, the companies on social? If we can just run through that quickly and then. Um, well, I'm, I mean, all of, all of the brands have their own mm -hmm. handles. So at, right. at Londoner, at LDNR, at iRespect. Um, at F1 Eyewear, mm. at UV Ultimate Vision. Right. So all of, all of those handles on, on the usual social media channels and websites. And, um, you know, everybody's welcome. So anytime mm. anybody's interested or wants to, we're, we love having people. We love sharing it. You know, I love, I love sharing the story. So yeah. That's call fantastic. us, visit, just come do it. Just go and do it. Absolutely. Get it done. <laughs> Hey, that's yeah. it. All righty. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to end the show, and then we'll just chat afterwards. All right. Thank you, Jonah. Okay. Cool. Thanks, man. 